AD 238 was a year of great turmoil in the Roman Empire. After the assassination of Severus Alexander in 235, Maximinus Thrax, a giant of a man who possessed almost superhuman strength and endurance, was proclaimed emperor. Thrax was said to be so named because he was born in Thrace, but little else is known of his background. He rose through the ranks of the army in part due to his imposing physical features. He was said to be of great height. Some sources say he was just shy of eight feet tall. He's depicted with a jutting chin and large brow, and stories are told of him running aside a chariot and keeping up. In spite of his powerful presence, Thrax was of common origin and thus unpopular with Rome's elite, especially the Senate. In 238, the popular but elderly patrician governor of North Africa, Gordian Africanus, and his son Gordian II were proclaimed joint emperors. Upon learning of this rebellion, Thrax responded quickly and attacked Gordian II's untrained army at Carthage. Gordian II was killed and his forces easily defeated by the battle-hardened Thrax. Upon learning of his son's defeat and death, Gordian Africanus took his own life. The joint reign of the Gordiani lasted a mere 22 days. Knowing that retribution against them for their support of Gordian Africanus and his son would be swift and harsh, the Senate proclaimed two of their own number, Balbinus and Pupianus, as joint emperors. Thrax immediately rushed back to Rome to deal with this latest revolt, but ran into difficulties and delays along the way that tested the patience of his army. After many hardships, Maximinus Thrax was murdered by his own troops. Any feelings of optimism on the part of Balbinus and Pupianus at the death of Thrax proved to be short-lived. Balbinus suspected Pupianus was plotting to kill him in a bid for sole power, and the co-emperors were unable to work together. The Praetorian Guard resented the co-emperors being appointed by the Senate, as they usually profited financially from the selection of new emperors. They began to form a plan to murder the emperors who they were sworn to protect. Pupianus discovered this plot and asked Balbinus for help, but Balbinus refused, believing this was part of a plot by Pupianus to kill him. Pupianus went to visit Balbinus in his imperial quarters in order to plead his case, but the two emperors fell into an argument. While they were arguing, the Praetorian Guard burst into their room and dragged them into the streets where they were both tortured and killed after a reign of only 99 days. The Praetorian Guard proclaimed Gordian III, the 13-year-old grandson of Gordian Africanus, the new emperor. A large issue of coins were struck early in the young emperor's reign, and presumably some of these coins were used to maintain the support of the troops. In AD 241, Gordian married the daughter of Timosithius, the leader of the Praetorian Guard. His military position and influence as father-in-law of the emperor gave Timosithius great power within the imperial government. Things seemed good as there was now a strong and loyal hand to guide the young emperor as he matured and gained political and military experience. In the east, in the decades before the 240s, the Romans had taken advantage of weakness in the Persian Empire by conquering lands in Mesopotamia. Then Ardashir became emperor of Persia and unified and strengthened his empire before passing it on to his son Shapur in A.D. 240. Shapur made it his goal to retake the lands that had been lost to Rome and invaded Roman territory in the east. In response to this, Timosithius marched to Syria and defeated Shapur at the Battle of Racina, forcing Shapur to withdraw to Mesopotamia. Timosithius then summoned Gordian to the east so his son-in-law could share in the glory of a successful military operation against Persia. Up to this point, the reign of Gordian III had been a resounding success. The young emperor was happily married. His loyal father-in-law was an outstanding administrator, and success followed success. By all appearances, Gordian was at the beginning of a long and prosperous reign that would restore Rome's stability. Then disaster struck. Timosithius came down with an unknown illness that quickly killed him, and the teenaged Gordian found himself alone and far from the capital of his empire. 
In an effort to replace Timosithius with another strong hand, Gordian appointed Philip the Arab as his new Praetorian prefect. After this, there are multiple conflicting accounts of what happened next. All that's known for sure is that when the army returned from the east, Gordian III was no longer with them, and Philip the Arab had been declared emperor. According to Roman records, Philip killed Gordian and made peace with Shapur so that he could return to Rome and secure his position as emperor after his coup d'etat. Some sources say that Philip had Timosithius poisoned and forced Gordian to make him Praetorian prefect. Other sources say that Timosithius died of a legitimate disease, that Gordian willingly made Philip prefect, and that Philip then killed Gordian. Some sources even state that a frightened Gordian offered to give up the throne in exchange for his life. There would seem to be little doubt that regardless of the specific details, Gordian was overthrown and killed by Philip the Arab. After all, similar circumstances played out over and over during the course of Roman history, especially in the 3rd century. However, there is one piece of evidence that suggests otherwise. A carving was discovered in what is today part of Iran that shows Shapur mounted on horseback, accepting surrender from Philip the Arab. In this carving, the Persians record a missing battle, a battle that is mentioned nowhere in the Roman records. Under Shapur's horse in this carving, there is a dead body the body of a Roman killed in this missing battle. It is the body of Gordian III. To the proud Romans, nothing would be more humiliating than knowing that their legions had been defeated in battle by foreigners. It would be far better to let the people at home believe that one emperor had simply been overthrown by another. From Philip's point of view, beginning your reign by surrendering to a foreign enemy would present the weakest possible image for a new emperor. It would be far better to be viewed as the brutal murderer of the previous emperor than as the man who began his reign by bowing in humiliating defeat to the hated Shapur. At this stage, almost 1800 years after the fact, there's no way to know what really happened to Gordian III or what level of guilt, if any, Philip had in his death. I do not espouse any particular theory. But the Romans would have had a strong motive in covering up a defeat in battle. If you found this video interesting, please subscribe and hit that like button. This will help our channel grow and keep you informed of future videos. Thank you for watching.